what is up our fellow monarch monsters we hope y'all are good it is your boy trey of the bat channel and we are live once again getting to be talking about the latest episode of monarch legacy of monsters episode seven will the real may please stand up oh oh super bro just jumping right in you're not just not gonna wait today huh just, just i forgot to you uh time. didn't come in first so uh i uh I became number one camera. So here, back to you. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, a little cameo appearance from Super Bro. <laughs> uh, it's great that. to see everyone here. Obviously, by the thumbnail, you can tell some some big Easter eggs and cameo uh, references happens uh, that are part of the MonsterVerse. Mecha Godzilla being the big one. Uh, we're starting to get the origins of Apex and uh, Walter Simmons. So it's it's some big deal going on in this latest episode, but I think Corey and I hopefully we're gonna try to take it a little easy on this one uh, because we've we've started to address that we have a few frustrations going on with the story of this show, and they they kind of doubled down on the part that we're not really enjoying uh, a little further. So we're we're gonna try to just be focused on the story, bring up fairly you know all the things that are we think they need to work on improve on and where are they going with it but we're definitely interested to hear your guys's thoughts replay crew comment as we go through especially those who are really checking out this monarch legacy of monsters on apple tv but let's go through all the pleasantries real quick guys follow us on our social media pages it's a great way to get to know us uh, you know, just through our DMs, you know, chatting with us about what's going on in your life. Or maybe maybe you got something cool going on that you want to tell us about. Or, you know, something, some news came out on social media about Godzilla or something else. I don't know. But DM us at Twitter, Instagram, threads, uh, TikTok at the underscore bat channel. If you're still on Facebook, do at holy bat channel. It's just a great way to get in touch with us and build a community. We're doing a lot of fun things on instagram especially with our stories you know doing a lot of polls and stuff like that so definitely follow us there um and then as always it helps us out so 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 much when you guys smash that like you share this video subscribe if you have ah! <laughs> I love that video. Uh, it helps us out when you subscribe because we are so close to our end of the year goal. 3,000 subs. We're 10 away from 2,800. So let's do it, guys. Let's do it. We've done crazier things on this channel of you know getting like 300 subs within like a week. So we can do it. We just need you to share the stream, like it, get all of your Godzilla friends in the chat. And help us reach, help, help make the, the holidays even more special. It's like Gian Marco said, my boy, it's good to see you, Gian Marco, saying, hey, guys, happy holidays. Happy holidays, guys. Merry Christmas. Thank you to all who joined us uh, last night for our Rebel Noon watch party. We had a wonderful time. Uh, just a, a really cool film over on Netflix that Zack Snyder is building and fleshing out this insane space opera universe that is just epic and i can't wait for part two uh and it just became number one on netflix so great job guys i'm really pumping those numbers up let's keep it going i've already watched it now four times i turned it on even after a watch party oh just to my kind of yeah trey i did I, I did it mostly because uh of notes that i've been taking for a video that's gonna be coming out later today that we'll talk about Ooh. at the end of the show so keep an eye out, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of these episodes. And of course, you can continue with our Monarch discussions that we have. And as always, our watch parties that we're doing a Monarch Legacy of Monsters next Thursday with Birthright, episode eight. It's going to be fun. I, I think I know what's coming. We're going to get a new Titan, that hog Titan that we saw in the trailer based off uh, the picture I saw on Apple TV She's wearing the same coat, so I'm going to assume we're going to see that dude. So I'm very, very, very excited for that indeed. But let's go ahead and bring out the best co-host I could ever ask for, Super Bro. Corey, how's it going, big fella? Hey, buddy. I'm doing fantastic, man. Yeah, it was a good night last night. Uh, yeah, we were uh, ready to rock and roll tonight, so uh, today, and uh, ready for Christmas. Thanks to everybody who's uh, 
here uh, today, you know, celebrating the holidays with us. So that's super awesome. But yeah, man, I, I'm uh, super excited to talk about this episode. Um, yeah, there's there's some things that we liked a lot, and there's some things that we're like, man, nah, on it a little bit. So uh, definitely curious to hear um, what everybody's thoughts are today. But man, we got this chat popping already this uh, this morning or day, whatever it is right now. We got Brogu in the chat. What's up, Brogu? We got Oracle's Ooh. Clock Tower. What's up, Oracle? Red Hooded Outlaw, Beyond the Knights in the House, The Butler, The Batman Who Laughs, Joker's Wild. I always like saying Joker's Wild. You know, that's like, it's just like, you know. It's a kinda, great YouTube name. Kind of feels like Top Gun, too. Joker's Wild, like a call sign, you know, like Batwoman in the House. We got Carrie Kelly, Nine Lives in Hell here, Mistress of Mayhem, Wayne Enterprises, you Crazy Craig Rowland. King Donkey Kong, a town Kaiju, 1954. Akio Lee, what's up, buddy? Hashtag restore this night on burst, guy. Rebel Moon was number one today. We got Dean Classified, Monarch Eyes Only, Red Robin in the House, Trevor H, Gian Marcos, and Pella. Um, there is more people, and I was trying to catch them as they're all coming in, but they're coming in fast and furious beyond the night. The Batman who laughs. Man, I'm it's ready, good. buddy. It's good to see you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us uh, to talk about Monarch. It's mm. this episode. I feel like a lot of people just based off what I've seen on social media, some people said it's the worst episode yet. Um, I haven't seen anyone like full on be like, Oh yeah, this is, this is peak Monarch right here. So it'll be interesting to see what the chat thinks. Uh, as we kind of discuss some of the cool elements and some of the parts that I think uh, we're going to address some of the issues that we're seeing with the writing of this. Because I think th all the actors, they're doing a wonderful job. I don't think it's any of their fault. I think it's just the characters mm. at this point. Uh, I think the first downfall of this episode was once again, Super Bro. We didn't get no legacy cast, man. Yep, I'm telling you, that's where, where there's issues with this sh uh, series. It's always had something to do with the legacy cast not being there, in my opinion. The le the legacy cast is just an amazing cast. Yeah, I, I agree. And for some reason, I don't know if someone, you know, of how they did this. I don't know if they like separated the stories. You know, like the whoever wrote like the the legacy cast story, and then whoever wrote post G Day crew, it feels different. One feels smooth and like actually like really interesting storytelling. The other one just seems like we're going in circles. You know that it was like they didn't know what to do with ten episodes, so they're just rehashing the same themes rather than actually like making an interesting arc that makes sense you mm -hmm. know some people are going backwards with their character like they every step they take forward it's three steps back which is confusing to me you know yeah. um but definitely I, I agree super bro the the fact that we had a great episode with the legacy cast in episode six to now not have the legacy cast it's kind of frustrating because I feel like a lot of people are like this, this is your bread and butter right here. This legacy cast, they're, they're doing some really cool stuff with finding, you know, the founders of Monarch and kind of fleshing out the mysteries that are going on there, which tells me whatever this uh, operation hourglass with Lee Shaw, that's going to show the hollow earth and, his knowledge and is going to answer the question about why he looks so young for his age. Um, there, there's there's going to be something really big about that. Maybe they'll spend an entire episode on it. If they're smart, they'll spend an entire episode on the legacy cast. No, barely any storyline well, going on. I, I was thinking about it, Trey, like it, it, it's a very fine line. Um, with uh writing these types of shows you know like monarch legacy of monsters it's in the name monsters so people are expecting you to have some awesome kaiju action well as we see you know it's also about the human interaction that's what we loved about walking dead and the uh, dramas and stuff like that when you start to not have a very good human story element and you don't have any uh monsters in it you know it, it makes 
it, it makes people a little worried. It makes people a little frustrated, you know, like, you, you, you got to be careful, you know, give the people what they want. And we like the legacy cast and we like Shaw, you know, that's, that's what's going on right now. Yeah, absolutely. And Shaw definitely brought the fire. Uh, literally. He was in fantastic. I, my episode, favorite parts. You know, he's just a very cool character that uh, in a weird way, he has kind of become the antagonist that we kind of predicted in the future. Um, but it's, it's, no bad guy ever thinks they're in the wrong, right? And in a way, he's not wrong. We kind of agree with him. He's trying to prevent another G Day. Um, but let's we'll, we'll definitely talk about that in a bit. Broga says, I watched Rebel Moon Thursday all day yesterday and this morning. Lost count. Good job, Broga. Keep it up, man. Um, Corey, let, let's let's just go ahead and dive in to Monarch episode seven with the real May. Please stand up. So we knew this episode was going to focus mostly on May's backstory. Uh, and it was going to give us some answers to why she is the way she is and who is she on the run from. But I loved, Corey, that they started this episode with Tim bursting out of the desert sands like Godzilla himself. Mm. Uh, and it, it answers uh, Kojay's favorite question. Tim is still alive, and Tim is about to be his favorite character easily. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a little sad that we didn't see what Shaw did going over there with his pistol. It it really seems like that was a an opportunity to kind of like I don't know show the brutality of Shaw of how any means necessary is worth it. You know, well, it, it, if you think about it too, you know, like you know maybe he didn't have the pistol out over there like he was going to kill them, but more of like a you know they're not going to they, they all had guns. And they're not going to, you know, take me hostage or anything like that. So that, that maybe that's he just had the gun drawn already. Um, mm. We have uh, Caitlin Laurie in here. She said, "Episode eight, we going back to the 1950s." But I wonder what episode. When are we going to get to see Godzilla versus the Ion Dragon? Welcome, Caitlin. Thanks for uh, joining. I think this is Caitlin's first time here as well. So thanks for yes. coming on in. Uh, welcome, Kalen. Thank you so much for for being here. And uh, I, I agree. I think we are. Hopefully, we're going to get more legacy casts in the next episode. If I had a guess, based off that uh, second half season trailer uh, that they showed for Monarch Legacy and Monsters with that fight scene that you're talking about, um, my guess is that's going to be a finale theme. You know that they're just going to save the big battle. Godzilla just going crazy. You know, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that as well. That's going to be a great episode. I, I mean, the finale should always be the when you bring out the big guns, you know, to get people excited for a potential season two if they do if they do go that route. Um, but with episode seven, we learn that Tim survives, uh, and the cast, our our post G Day crew, our Trinity, is already at uh, the airport. May was able to to get them tickets you know to to get out of there now one thing i do want to bring up is at the end of episode six we we learned that may well we didn't learn but it's revealed to kate that may has betrayed them she she sold them out to monarch which is put them in the position that they're in and she feels betrayed she tells may to go to hell so it's a very big deal right so I want to bring that up for the simple fact that this it this whole episode was kind of flip flop very easily to the point where it didn't make sense for the characters. We have this whole like, well, she, you know, she sold us out. Screw her. We don't want to be talking to her anymore to. Oh, my God. Where is she? We have to go save her. So it was like very weird. It was a very you know what I'm saying, Corey, like they, they kept going back and forth with these characters and even uh Kintaro Kintaro who was very much we got to find our dad we got to find our dad he was the hope of it this episode starts with him like who the hell cares about our father he left us again you know yeah Which, and like it, us seeing it from the outside we see what's going on you know clearly he's working on a mission yeah you could be upset with your dad that uh he's disappeared but obviously since uh g day there's uh um you know a lot of stuff going on in the world and he has you know some other focuses so he you know the need of the many outweigh the need of the few or the one you know or the two in this case and uh he um is doing his mission to what, what whatever he's working on to uh um 
to kind of work on the world after G Day. So for them to not understand the bigger picture, and to, uh, you know, yes, their dad was here and there throughout their childhood, going back and forth, but obviously they care about him enough to go look for him. And they've been looking for him this entire time. So for them to just, you know, like, oh, dad drove off that way. We saw him and he uh, was trying to tell us to get the heck out of there. Well, he's trying to tell you to get the heck out of there because Godzilla is there. He's about to wake him up. So, uh, yeah, for them to just kind of abandon the mission uh, at, the, at that point, you know, it was just just didn't seem true to the mission at hand from the very beginning of this show. Yeah, and not only that, it just shows like we we come so far. You've they've really like honed in on we got to find our dad. Uh, to the, all of a sudden, it's just like, well, he he didn't even like care to come back, or you know, he left us, and you know, while we were getting stomped on by Godzilla, or maybe he was trying to lead Godzilla away. Like clearly, mm-hmm. he was he left his kids to in a way to probably protect him he knew he was gonna be on a dangerous mission right to go find godzilla and i i know they don't quite know all the answers and it, what their father's doing is quite a mystery to them but it, it just seems like to go from we got to find dad we got to find dad to kentaro now being the one being like oh no screw him he left us again you know we finally saw him found him and he was like bye kids which it wasn't it didn't seem yeah. like that you know it was weird for him to have that reaction rather than like you know we're almost there like if we just keep following the path let's 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 go you know um i I, think the other thing that's a little frustrating to trey is um tim brings it up constantly constantly in this show and it's a very good point tim says all the time that your grandparents your your family built monarch you know they were pioneers in Monarch and everything that Monarch's done, and uh, you know, these this this younger generation is just like you know so easy, and you know willing to give up, you know, like and to to move on. Where you know the Legacy cast, they were they were fighters along the entire way, every step. You know, they were trying to make something the Monarch, and you know our post G Day cast is so quick to give up. And I think that's I think that's what's frustrating. We know what's in their blood. We know what's in their DNA. Their dad's out there fighting, uh, you know, for you know, for Godzilla or with Godzilla, and uh, you know, they 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 give up so easy. Yeah, and and it is a bit frustrating to see, um, and it it keeps happening. There's so much of this. We're in it. We're out of it. We're in it. We're out of it. And it's it's starting to feel a bit repetitive and old. Um, and I just hope, I hope with the last few episodes that maybe they avoid that. Maybe we're finally on the mission now, which we should have been on the mission back on like episode five, <laughs> you know, episode four, um, when they were realizing they were getting closer and closer to finding their dad. But uh, as TJ says, Tim always says, this is your legacy and they keep uh, rubbishing it off. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, frustrating indeed as red hooded outlaw says um but it we do get some of that flashback uh may is kidnapped by this company called aet uh that uh, we learn she was once an employee of uh, her boss believes that she was gonna be the one to take them to the future because of her skills uh with coding and hacking into things uh, so clearly they're trying to bring the youngest and best minds to this company. Um, but May already kind of gets the sense that there's something else going on here with this company, AET. They're not all what they say they are. Um, so it builds a little bit of the suspense there. Um, but of course, now that May has been captured, Kate, who told May to go to hell, is now wanting to find May <laughs> because she's gone missing and uses Tim's help and Monarch to locate her um, because Tim believes if he helps out the kids to find their friend May, that the kids will basically give him the next couple of steps to go find Hiroshi and figure out what's going on, uh, especially with finding Shaw, who's gone missing with his partner, Duvall. So there's a lot of different motivations going on throughout this entire episode that are pushing us further and further each, uh, 
each episode as it goes on. Corey, go to the next slide, please. One. So as we talked about, uh, you know, when Tim gives a call to the deputy director, um, Verdugo, uh, Verdugo, right, Corey, Verdugo? Did I say that right, Verdugo? I think so. I, I um, think so, yeah, I'm not yeah. quite sure. How With the that. deputy director, uh, gives her a call and says, Godzilla has been seen, he is out. Uh, and she wants a, a full report. I love how, th see, this is just like part of the, the comedic aspects that Tim is able to bring to the show that I just love his character. Verdugo, thank you, uh, TJ. Um, that just makes it, uh, <laughs> you know, very interesting of how Monarch works because I'm still a little confused, Corey, about where Sarah Zawa is in all of this. Like you would think being who Sarah Zawa is, he's technically the head of Monarch, even though he doesn't have an official title, he's kind of a behind the scenes guy, but Godzilla is his business. And it was interesting to me that well, he wasn't brought up at all in this situation. Well, I, I think, I yes, now is the time probably you would have to get Sarah Zawa uh, involved. I understand from like, you know, working in like government agencies and stuff like that, if, you know, you, you don't necessarily need to tell your, you know, highest report yet um, because, you know, obviously he's focused on the overall mission, Godzilla specifically and everything like that. Uh, the issue with Shaw and these kids are, are relatively small at this point, you know, prior to all this before uh, and with Kentaro. But now that we actually have a Godzilla sighting um, in, in uh, this movie or in the show, uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of time now you have to get uh, Sarah Zawa uh, involved. So uh, they should have reported it at this point. There needs to be a few more <laughs> references to the 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 larger picture in terms of the monster verse rather than these little drops every now and then, which we did get some this episode, mm -hmm. but it, it's hard to kind of, uh, the hard thing about doing these spinoff series is the continuity aspect of it. And I get, they're just trying to focus on the characters that they do have in the show. But at the same time, when you have someone as important as Sarah Zawa is to Monarch and Godzilla specifically is his, speciality i guess you could say and his main mm -hmm. focus it, it seems like he would immediately get in on this you know yeah, he then, wouldn't we just now have to yes you're yeah. absolutely right Jim. he wouldn't be silent because now it makes it a bit confusing of how we get to king of the monsters which i i still gotta say there's this weird thing going on in monarch legacy of monsters where I, i'm happy we got the godzilla versus kong connection to that film but it feels like we're still forgetting about Godzilla King of the Monsters. We haven't heard any references that really tie in with that film. Um, so I'm, I'm like curious about that. I feel like there's so much opportunity when it comes to Colonel Jonah, the eco bio terrorist that, you know, was first mentioned and no, you know, came, became aware to Monarch all the way in 2005. So you probably can hear my dog snoring. <laughs> Ellie. Uh, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you put her um, thing, right? Um, I, I think that's you know, maybe maybe that's the bigger picture at hand, you know, type thing where they're eventually going to get to uh that, but uh it's it's it, it's it's hard to know for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh and in a weird way, Shaw kind of took over as like kind of a Jonah like character too, because mm -hmm. as we learned during all this time when uh, our group is trying to find May. Shaw found a monarch outpost and he's taking it over because it has weapons that they could use for his particular mission, which is, as far as we know, is to prevent G Day. And Corey, kind mm -hmm. of interesting because, you know, with Rebel Moon that just came out, one of the fun quotes in Rebel Moon was like, one thing, I, you know, that Kai says is one thing I've learned is you always want to be on the right side of history. And here we have. Shaw saying a similar thing, like, like, here's your chance, guys. Like, you can either do what Monarch tells you, which is the wrong way, or you can be on the right side of history and help us prevent another G Day. What did you think about that moment of Colonel Shaw coming into his own and and really being kind of an aggressor? I, I loved it, man. Like when uh, uh you know, I, I saw it going down, I I was digging it, you know. 
nobody knows Monarch and uh, these kaijus and uh, all these monsters better than Shaw. So uh, he has an idea of how to fix the problem. And uh, I, I, I love it. You know, it's it was cool to see that kind of military uh, military takeover that uh, um, uh, just complete uh, like we're in charge now. It, it, it got me excited. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, a- absolutely. And uh, it, it just makes it all the more fascinating. Uh, Corey and I kind of joked during the the watch party with uh, the one monarch. Uh, agent who was wearing the Hawaiian shirt, we we were thinking like, oh, this is Jurassic Park. Like she's totally screwing them all over, allowing Shaw to come in. But that wasn't the case. She was actually uh, one of the victims in this in this particular uh, scene, and she's able to let Monarch know that uh, hey, Shaw's taking over, and he's up to no good. Starting to making trouble in the neighborhood. You know, <laughs> uh, what does Monarch even do? Monarch, so. Uh, Monarch, I think it technically not only is to locate uh, research, you know, Titan activity, but to also create plans of protection, defense. Um, not so much, I think, in a military aspect, but like kind of the way that they built the TPP uh, of that alert system to help people get to safety uh, in a world of Titans, you know, so they're, they kind of do it quite a bit, but it's mostly generically focused on um, the Titans. And I believe Gareth Edwards came up with this concept of their logo, which looks like a hourglass. Um, but he says it's the, you know, it's the collision of myth and science. One side is myth, one side is science, you know, and it's hitting together, you know, so we get the myths of giant creatures in the sea to now the science aspect of it, the research and development that comes with that. So, um, that's, yeah, that's what Monarchs are about, that secret organization of the Monsterverse. But great, great question, uh, Dragon Trainer 300. Um, we do, uh, as we get closer to finding May, uh, we learn our cast finds her family and learns her real name, which is Cora, and they meet her sister, which we know, Cora, May, however you want to call her. I'm going to continue calling her May because if I try calling her Cora, I'm going to mess it up every, probably every day. Cora. Um, Cora. Uh, we learned that May, uh, her sister, is is very much aware. And I love that her sister is kind of sizing up Tim. Like, you know, which anime does she like? Uh, and he's able, it's like one of the moments where Tim, I think, became a lot of fan favorites. Uh, when he just starts naming some of the best anime around. And she's like, shit, like this guy knows what he's talking about. But you Tim knew able- Tim was going to know some anime. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was so cool to kind of just have that that bit of that competition. I loved how he was able to kind of play that scene. Just once again, he's adding this kind of fun comedic element to it that I really enjoy to this show. He's he's definitely a highlight to Monarch Legacy of Monsters, and I love how the actor is playing it. He's um, but, making the um, post G Day cast uh, bearable. bearable. Yeah, bearable. I was waiting for that. I was just like, he's he's definitely making the post G Day crew a little easier to swallow, you know. Um, but yeah, but he's able to catch on that. Uh, her sister knows something. She knows where you know possibly May is, or can lead them with some hints that of where possibly they could find her. Uh, Kaylin says, "What happens to the other Monarch people from Godzilla King of the Monsters? Because they are they only." Monarch people that is left is Gia and Eileen Andrews. Oh, you're talking about from the difference of Godzilla King of the Monsters all the way to Godzilla versus Kong. Um, yeah, they, they kind of disappear. It's kind of a phase out, I guess you could say. Um, I, I don't know exactly. They don't really mention what happens to them. And I don't believe Millie Bobby Brown's character is in the new Godzilla Kong, the new empire. So they're, they're kind of phasing them out even further. So, Hopefully it would be cool if they somehow show up at some point in this episode, uh, you know, especially the mom from King of the Monsters. Uh, it would make sense if she was in this show. Uh, I think is it Emma Russell? Emma Russell, I think, is her character. Um, it, it, you know, just to, once again, it's it's kind of that weird thing. Where, like, I don't know why they're kind of ignoring King of the Monsters so much. 
in this particular show, it seems like it'd be a good idea to connect them or at least mention some of them. Really, the only character from King of the Monsters that we have heard of is Sarazawa. They have mentioned Sarazawa, uh, which is kind of weird. I wish I wish it was more though. Um, but great, great points all around, uh, Kaylin. Um, but yeah, t- Tim is the best. Everyone's yeah, they're combining myth and science. The uh, Dragon Trainer. It's just the idea that like some kaiju's were myths, right? You know, like mermaids, or you could say, uh, you know, the kraken was myth, and now it's reality and it's science coming into that. You know, um, it's kind of the idea of it. But uh, yeah. Uh, Corey, go ahead and go to the next slide. So our, our crew, our post-G Day Trinity team, and uh, and our boy Tim follows the sister. And uh, <laughs> I love you can tell like how they're kind of uh, amateurs at this, you know, where they're following too close. And Tim's like, nope, I think we're doing this wrong. Uh, and you know, they get to that point where like, yeah, they get they get caught by the sister, and she's able to let them know that um, the th- very thing that may has been running from is this company called aet which i believe is advanced experimental technology which the moment i heard that it already started to tip me off you'll see at the watch party you kind of see my reaction like hmm i think i know where this is leading um but we we need to i said it just straight up you said mecha godzilla already yeah. uh, oh, wow. I, I, in, in, in the uh, live stream i was like oh mecha godzilla yeah, well, well, Corey, see, Corey was even on it too. Well done, dude. Um, but yeah, uh, what's up, Crash the Purple Puppet? It's good to see you, brother. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so we learned that uh, at some point, basically, why the company is after May is that she she basically corrupted a whole bunch of files that they lost. They basically lost millions of dollars worth of uh, research and studies on neural um cybernetics once again kind of a nod to the big bad in godzilla versus kong uh and she even name drops you know when she's like well, what does it matter how much money i lost you doesn't simmons just have that in his couch which is walter simmons who was in godzilla versus kong and he was the owner of apex so they're they're tying in godzilla versus kong very cool i do like this connection i do like this reference because it's it's connecting us to the bigger MonsterVerse world rather than making this its own separate thing. And it's kind of filling in a few plot holes, I guess you could say, from Godzilla vs. Kong, which is a smart move. But as we learn, when May has discovered that there's basically cruel animal testing going on, she she corrupts all these files, and it's what forces her to make a run for it when they discover it is May who destroyed all their files. And she has, sorry, that was kind of wild too, because like they're a major tech company as well. (laughs) They don't like have backup files, they can't restore it somehow. You know, I was like, what the heck? You're right, yeah. Uh, Clearly, not uh, being smart with all their files, you know. But then again, May is the type of person that she would know how to, you know, how to destroy that kind of stuff and and really mess it up. I mean, she's quite brilliant, right? the dragon trainer asks, is monarch after or before king of the monsters it's before. technically right after godzilla 2014 so i think this particular show the main timeline is 2015 so it's about four years before king of the monsters because i think king of the monsters they kind of following the the timeline of when the movies were released so it was like 2019 is basically when King of the Monsters happens. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so it's it's before King of the Monsters, after Godzilla 2014. There are a few scenes that take place in the 50s, early 60s. So, yeah, there's some of that. Um, yeah, great, great questions, guys. You guys are asking some good stuff, Dragon Trainer 300. Um, where was I at, Corey? Oh, yeah, so she's she has to go on the run. She has to leave her sister behind. And she ends up flying to Japan, which we know that's when she meets Kentaro. And it it helps explain why she was, you know, like, why did you take a picture of me? I need you to delete that, please. You know, it's really showing basically her fear about this company because she even brings up, she's like, how come you didn't, you know, put a warrant out for my arrest? And when the CEO basically says, like, we handle things internally, 
this company is not afraid to get their hands dirty and and silence people uh, in a very violent way if needed. We'll kill you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Corey, go ahead to the next slide. But it, now that they've talked to her sister and they know the company AET is uh, the one that is possibly holding May, they're able to go to this uh, company that's located in Seattle, but they need a way to break into the building or at least get people out. Uh, and Tim is able to think of a, a cool way, which is use the Titan alarm system to get people moving. Now, Corey and I thought this was like kind of a crazy scene. Like, while it's cool that Monarch is able to do this, the simple fact that they could just get everyone moving all at once, we thought they could really abuse that power, Corey. Mm. Do you think we'll see anything like that in this episode where, I mean, here they they abused it, right? They used it to their advantage to get people moving. But do you think Monarch will ever see Monarch use it as a way to control people? Well, we, we kind of saw them do it already, right? With uh, them moving everybody out, uh, I, I think it's I think it's possible for sure. Um, anytime somebody has that much control, um, they you know it, it, it it's going to be tempting to use it in your uh, favor, right? So, um, yeah, I, I kind of hope they go down that uh, um, pathway a little bit more personally. So you would like to see Monarch kind of, or at least a, a, a faction of Monarch to kind of really kind of be kind of the secret world order organization? Well, absolutely. Well, clearly the Monarch is uh, kind of like that already in some ways. And they're a very fractious group as we, we've we seen, you know, like there's a lot of uh, people think that, oh, they should go this route. They should go that route. You know, that's been happening since the beginning of Monarch when we saw uh, you know, how Shaw uh, and uh, Keiko um, wanted to protect Godzilla and the mm. government was like, we're going to blow him up. So, um, you know, Monarch's been very fractious from the very beginning. So I think that, uh, yeah, um, I, I think it could be used and abused. I agree. Uh, one thing I will say that I loved about this particular scene where we see these um, chimps hooked up to these neuroscience uh, devices. I what I loved about it is, in a way, <laughs> you kind of realize, wow, the they get the these chimps get some revenge in Godzilla versus Kong because while there's animal cruelty going on with these testing, Kong is at some point going to whoop up on Mecha Godzilla, which was you know created from this type of technology. So it's kind of kind of a, a little hint at pure justice that they use the the chimps to <laughs> to test this tech um absolute power corrupts yeah absolutely uh <laughs> play off words um seems a lot of people have their own agenda well yeah we saw shaw have his own agenda hiroshi has his own agenda um Duvall, uh even the deputy director has kind of her own thing going on so yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of people playing an angle, and this whole show has been about people playing angles yep. and trying to get something out of someone else to get what they want, and yes. the same people who are playing those people, right? It's a lot of, I mean, it's very much a spy show where you mm. can't really trust anyone but yourself, mm. you know, uh, and you think you're playing somebody, but they're actually playing you too. Um, so it's it's kind of crazy in all that. Uh, Crash the Purple Puppet says, I think they got rid of Godzilla, then they would be, oh, I think if they got rid of Godzilla, then they would be doomed because they can't stop all the Titans. For example, Kemazots destroyed all of San Francisco and they had to use Kong to take him down. Um, yeah, yeah, there, it's definitely as uh, Sarah Zhao said, Godzilla is the ba balance, right? He's the one that will defend us from these other Titans. And we see that in the 2014, in the um, 20. 19 film with king of the monsters and really in godzilla versus kong he was pissed off that the humans made mecha godzilla because you know it was probably going to be used to dominate the human species as well it was going to be the next great weapon and godzilla was like uh-uh that's not happening um kaylin says i really love keiko i feel like she has love connection with godzilla because she was crying when they nuke him and then in episode six she was happy to see him again i really respect her a lot i i agree so much kaylin she has been that's partly why we love the legacy cast so much like keiko mm. uh the wyatt russell shaw and bill randa like that whole group just has such wonderful chemistry that uh 
it's it's really hard to pass up. And to me, Keiko has been a very nice um, connection and reference to classic Godzilla fans like myself of her connection with nature and also I'm trying to understand nature, which Godzilla is, right? Godzilla is a force of nature. So it, I really love that aspect of her character. And she she brings that classic Godzilla element to this show, which is very, very important. And we need more of it. We definitely need more of it in the show, for sure. Great points all around, guys. Uh, Mecha Godzilla versus Starro. <laughs> Mecha Godzilla wins. Um, <laughs> uh, Corey, go ahead and go to the, to the next slide. Uh, so we learn that basically... The CEO wants me to continue to do what she's doing. That they're 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 gonna let her go freely, but basically she they made a deal with her, saying you're gonna be our spy. You you did so much damage to our company that we could destroy you and your family's life, but if you spy for us, give us all this Titan information that we could use to further our goals, then you know then we'll let you go freely. Um, and may it, it appears Corey may took her up on this offer. Do you think so? Man, the amount of times these people flip flop on each other so much, I think she absolutely did. You know, like um, the fact that they're st still kind of hanging around. Yeah, she she wants to be home. If she found a way to be home, I think she's going to take her up on that. So I, I, I think yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I agree. I, I think she does. Uh, I think she is still playing, mm -hmm. playing her, her so-called friends, Kate and Kintaro. Um, and while the, the alarm system did work, uh, the CEO knew it was uh, all a ploy to, to get May. So when she makes that deal, May, May already plays into it, right? She's like, Hey, let me tell you who I really am, Cora, to kind of build that trust, to lure them in a little bit. Um, which is kind of unfortunate that the, you know, kids are so easy to forgive and like not notice that this company literally forced her to leave her family for two and a half years and put her on the run to the point where she didn't use her own money. She didn't use her own name to now they've captured her and all of a sudden they're going to let her go with no but you know, the, these aren't really kids, I mean, they're they're adults, you know, they have adult jobs, you know, so it's like they acting like kids. They acting like kids. They acting like kids, absolutely. <laughs> uh it, it was it was very yeah, it drove me nuts that uh they were just so willing to accept me and without really questioning her. Um so, you know, the dragon trainer, Corey, can you go back to the dragon trainers? Uh, when you said Godzilla keeps the balance, do you mean the balance between humans and Titans? Also, why are they called Titans anyways? Well, I mean, it's Greek mythology, right? Titans were, you know, basically the rulers of the earth. So they're, they're just playing off those types of wording, you know, with the Titans. Once again, myth and science, right? With Monarch. Um, it's, it's just a name that they've given them rather than calling them Kaijus, you know? Um, and Crash of Purple says, yeah, uh, yes, Dragon Train, the balance between humans and Titans, and Titans are the same creatures that lived before humans, and they went dormant, but the humans woke them up. Yeah, with all the, as we learned with 1954 and World War II, uh, if you read the Godzilla Awakening comics or Aftershock, you really learned that it's because of the humans' atomic testing that they really started to, to get the creatures' attentions, which is why we're starting to see more of them as time went on in this universe. Yeah, really, really, really cool stuff. I, I, Dragon Trainer, it seems like you haven't seen any of the, the Monsterverse films, which I would highly recommend. They're they're pretty good. Godzilla 2014 is amazing. Godzilla King of the Monsters is personally my favorite. Kong Skull Island is a good one. Godzilla vs. Kong and, and the new Godzilla Kong the New Empire is coming out uh, in early April, I want to say. So definitely check them out. They're, they're worth a watch, man. I agree. Um but we're now being pushed in this position where Tim is telling the deputy director, like, hey, maybe is the time Monarch comes out of the shadows. Maybe we need to become public and let people know so that way we can kind of, in a way, if we're brought into the light, we can still do things in the shadows as well. Um, and also to kind of save our butt after they just use an alarm system that no one knew what it was a part of until they got an app that says, Hey, a giant monster is coming ashore, you know? 
Um, but yeah, it's 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 a cool moment to and kind of takes us to where we see Monarch in Keen of the Monsters, where they're ha actually having congressional hearings with the U.S. government to kind of answer for some of the things that happened in Godzilla 2014. And it's also bringing up that question of what do we do with these Titans that are dormant? Do we try to kill them off or do we try to live in balance with them as Sarazawa says, you know? Um, yeah. This, it, this part, this part kind of frustrated me some, uh, when, uh, the deputy director went uh, out to the public with this press conference. Yes, I think it needed to be done, but this was the perfect opportunity that Dr. Sarazawa should have uh, given the nod of approval to allow that to happen because that, 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 that can't be her call. That has to be, that has to come from Dr. Sarazawa. Well, you know, and I thought the same thing too, Corey, because like it really should have been Sarah Zao mm -hmm. because he's the head of Monarch. He's yes. technically the face of Monarch, yes. uh, which they did kind of decanonize because technically in the comics, Sarah Zao's father was the founder of Monarch, but instead they kind of did uh, Keiko Shaw and Bill Rando were the founders, which that's fine. Um, but Sarazawa, yes, he's a very private person. And maybe we could look at this. If we wanted to find an excuse for why maybe she was the one to do it, you could look at it as political personal gain, right? She seems like she has more ambitions, just as kind of Shaw referenced when he was being interrogated by her. He's like, oh, you're almost at the top. How's it feel? You know, like you're still young. Maybe you'll get there. This could have been her way to kind of undermine Sarah Zawa to be like, look at me, I'm the face. And to be completely honest, in Sarah Zawa's file report that they did for the Monarch websites uh, leading into Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla uh, King of the Monsters, they do kind of reference that Sarah Zawa is a very private person and doesn't like to bring be in the, the spotlight with this kind of thing. He, he would much rather focus on things in the shadows you know not to be bothered with the government stuff so which is kind of funny of where he le ends up in king of the monsters in the very beginning of the movie um but yeah it seems like a lot of people are saying it should have been done by sarah zawa um def yeah definitely crash is right uh dragon train you should definitely watch the new legendary monster verse films they're absolutely great um i love what they've done with them I mean, classic godzilla fans to, to new Godzilla fans. It's all it's all good stuff, right? It's all Godzilla content. And I love the Godzilla designs. You can't go wrong there. Um, Corey, go ahead and bring up our next slide, please. So we also learned that uh, Shaw, what he's been up to, all those weapons, why is he gathering them? How is he going to stop the next G-Day? Well, he's going to go to all these different Hollow Earth portals, and he's basically going to blow them up and collapse them so that the <laughs> Titans can't get out. That's his plan. That's how he's going to stop G-Day. He's going to imprison them in the hollow earth, which is a very interesting uh, concept. Corey, do you think uh, this is going to work at all? Or the Titans, can they just make new ones? Oh, man. You know, how did they get there uh, from the beginning? You know, like that's, I think that's my first question. How did those portals get there? Um, there seems to be a little bit of a, you know, mystic, uh, um, element to it, some magic, you know, that these portals have auras coming out of it. You know, I, I think ultimately um, they opened up for a reason. And I think uh, wh while he could close them, I think there's always a possibility for things to shift and to open up back up again. Okay, gotcha. Um, out of curiosity, Corey, because last episode, Shaw says, I'm not trying to. to kill Godzilla. I'm trying to help him. Mm -hmm. How has this helped Godzilla to, to shut him off from the hollow earth? I don't, I don't know if he's trying to shut Godzilla off for hollow earth, but I think we kind of know that Godzilla is the apex monster. Um, he's the big bad uh, in uh, this uh, universe and he doesn't really, you know, cause issues if uh, he knows and he is the big bad. You know, when he starts seeing other titans or feeling the presence of other titans and kaijus uh, there, that's when he gets a little bit more active, right? You know, he knew 
that uh, these uh, in King of the Monsters, these other things were roaming around. So he 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 was looking to to fight them off, you know. So if um, uh, Shaw closes off these portals the to Hollow Earth um, and keeps these other Titans at bay, then Godzilla could just rest. He could just chill out, you know. And by Godzilla just chilling, you know, everybody else is chilling. Um, he, He's basically telling uh, all these other kaijus to bitch be cool, you know, like tell that bitch be cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, though the the problem is is Shaw doesn't know about Apex though, because we see what Apex does with mm-hmm. with Godzilla. You know, it, it pisses him off royally to where yeah. he's willing to kind of become the the aggressor. You know, the the Titan that's destructive Titan rather than the protector like he was for the first two films. Um, but it is a great scene. I was sad to see the frost vark kind of well, I don't know. Did the frost vark meet his end or was he shot through the I hollow think, earth? Portal, yeah, I think he got you know? he got sucked back in. Yeah, the, the suck zone. <laughs> he got sucked. Uh justice for the frost vark. <laughs> the frost vark <laughs> is one of the coolest titans I this show has done so far. I, I loved that. And it was cool to see kind of him return in this one. And um Shaw, man, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with, with his knowledge, his resources. And he definitely has a, a, a bit of a savagery to him that I like, uh, that we kind of saw in this episode. But remember, I remember I said to Ro, when he saw it, he was There's up something. to something, you know, and yeah. he, he kind of has a bit of a dark side to him. And I can't wait to see why that happens in the legacy cast. So hopefully next episode, we definitely get some more, but as we learn at the end of this episode, after um, Shaw succeeds in closing the Alaskan hollow earth portal. uh, And, and we honestly, we still need to know if that was what Hiroshi was trying to do. Like maybe Sean Hiroshi don't have the same goals in this. They, they might be very different. Um, so hopefully we learn why Hiroshi was doing what he was doing in the last episode and trying to lure Godzilla. Um, it'll be interesting. But at the end of the episode, the CEO of AET, uh, was on a phone call with Walter Simmons, the head of Apex and learns that the world is, is almost not ready for what we're about to do for them, you know? And of course, Apex um, cybernetics is the direct connection to Mecha Godzilla. So a very, very cool reference to godzilla versus kong right there and and honestly now you see that they've been working on mecha godzilla because i think Corey, i think the idea is godzilla versus kong technically takes place in 2024 uh, a little bit in the future so it takes them roughly almost 10 years to make mecha godzilla what he is so that's kind of crazy to to know that they had this planned since g-day um, which is very, very interesting. I hope we learn more about Apex Cybernetics. And honestly, it would be smart of them if we do get a season two, if they made Apex Cybernetics kind of the big bad. You know, the, the secret organization company that is stealing, you know, intel from Monarch is maybe corrupting some of the Monarch agents, maybe gets... Uh, you know, blackmail the deputy director, you know, for their own benefit. It would be really cool to kind of make them the the big bad. What do you think? Can we get a Monarch B Apex season two? I, I'm totally down for that, man. But like, I, I think it'd be awesome. Like, we, we're kind of getting a deep dive into Monarch. Let's get a deep dive into Apex, right? Yeah. Why not? Mm-hmm. Um, and in a way, I guess you could say Apex does connect – King of the Monsters a little bit because Jonah is the one that gives them um, King Ghidorah's head at the end of the movie of King of the Monsters. Mm. So you, you could say that and they use King Ghidorah's skull for Mechagodzilla. Yeah. Um, so the dog, my goodness, Ellie. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's where episode seven ends. It, it's there's some good elements to it. Well, first we should talk about one of the things that really irritated super bro. And I, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, at one of the things that I was just like, Oh my God, I can't believe Kate is doing this. Like, yes, we know Kate is, um, is lesbian from personal. And I, I have no care about that. That like, that doesn't bug me at all. It's just like the cruelness 
of this particular scene where they kind of show that there could be something romantic going on between Kate and May. And to have Kentaro, who does have a romantic relationship with May, it didn't really end. They, they kind of referenced that there was still there, you know, there was something between them. And I know people could say, well, Trey, this is just mirroring what, uh, you know, the kind of the love triangle in the legacy cast. But at the same time, it seems to me that Keiko made it very clear that she was kind of done with Shaw at some point and then married Bill. Um, with this, to, to do it kind of in front of Kentaro was like this weird, like Kentaro has just weirdly become a, his character has gotten worse for me each episode. At first I really liked him. I was like, oh yeah, this, this guy is kind of cool. Uh, and he could be kind of the leader of this group or, or, I don't know, just a very valuable member in some aspect. And to see kind of Kate being like, I don't care that you're right here next to me. I'm going to hit on your girl. Uh, it was just kind of this weird, I don't know. It, to me, it, it felt icky, <laughs> you know, like, like, oh, poor Kentaro. He's just letting it happen too. Like yeah. not a, what the hell? <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. Corey, where are they going with this in, in your mind? Bro, I hated this so much, dude. Like, I, I this, this shot frustrated me so much because obviously they've been doing a lot of that back and forthness. And I've kind of said for a while now the the new cast, the post G Day cast, is a bunch of whiny uh, kids, you know, and like just oh man, the, it's so frustrating. But like, I get doing like love triangles and different things like that. Um, but like, you know, technically Kitaro and Kate are you know step siblings, you know, uh, and that uh, added a little bit to the ickiness, right? Yeah, right. so that like, added to the ickiness as well. Yeah, and you know, clearly that they're they're trying to imply that there's this love triangle going on because, you know, if it was just a shot of you know uh, uh, Kate and May, uh, it, it would have been one thing, you know. But you see, freaking Kintaro looking at them in the back. Like, yeah. how awkward is that, dude? Like, he's just staring at him. Dude, like, put like, his tail between his legs, you know. Off and smooth, bro. Head. Like, what the heck are we doing back there? Like, yeah. hey, yo, can't get off my girl, yo. What, like, and you what know, is going on, man? The, the part that irritated me more about it, it like, like I said, it has nothing to do that it's, you know, May's now with Kate rather than Kentaro. It has nothing to do with that whole aspect. It has to do with Kate told May earlier in the episode to go to hell and that she does not mm -hmm. care about her because she betrayed them to now. Oh my God. I love you. What? Ish. Bro. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm honestly like you, you say you hate can like are disliking Gintaro more and more. I think Gintaro's just get like falling out of it, bro. Like he's like, he's getting just like, like, like he's been so like, side wheeled in well, this. Well, well, he's show. Side -wheeled, uh, you know, uh, he, he's just like, I honestly, he's just like, like getting out of it. Like his, his mind is just like not there anymore because he's just like, what the hell is going on here? I tell you what, I hate. Like, I, like I'm gonna say, it, I hate Kate. I am not a fan. Like, I, you, you say Kentaro's gotten worse. Kate has gone become the worst character in the world. She's a horrible human being. Like she is toxic, bro. Like I do not like Kate. I remember when you said that. Yeah, yeah, like, and it's unfortunate because she has like in some cases in the beginning, especially she had this such as like tragic backstory that like you could really get behind her and really hope for her healing, you know, and. Then you learn all of a sudden she's no better than her father because she yeah cheated on her first like girlfriend who wanted to yeah. move in with her, and she it she seems like she felt bad right like she even says like yeah. I don't deserve to be saved. To now she's now Mrs. Steal your girl you know <laughs> she's toxic AF bro she is insane I I, yeah. I I am really not liking her like. 
he treated uh her, you know her first relationship that we saw absolutely horrible uh you know she she's going around behind people's backs she's flip-flopping every second that she possibly can i love you i hate you i love you i hate you we're going this way going that way yeah i don't want to find my father i do want to find my father you know i yeah. don't want to find my father like they yes. keep going in circles with the all three of these characters to where it's like it's getting old I, and honestly, it's it's not the best parts to focus on them. You know, there's no human progression with them. Like we said, every step forward, they take two steps back. So we're just at a standstill. She's with just them. a horrible person. That, 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 that's that's the only way that, like, I guarantee you, if we got rid of Kate, Kate gets stepped down by Godzilla, immediately the uh, post GDA cast gets a million times better. Kentaro May, figure things out. You I know, don't like, know if it like, does. But... It, to me, it's just bad writing. She's poison, bro. She's absolutely poison in this uh, this trio going on right now. She's the one who's kind of leading things and pushing things around. And she's a horrible person. She, she like She's not a good person. She's worse, I think, in some ways than her father was. You know, like she, 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 she like, uh, you know, in some ways, you know, what can, uh, their dad did is wrong. Um, you know, having two separate lives, but each family didn't know about it. This person, this person is straight up not just stabbing you in the back. She's stabbing you in your chest in front of you, bro. Like your brother sitting right there and she knows, man. It's insane how they are letting this fly, man. I, I, I kind of wish Kintaro would have punched her right there. You know, they're siblings. No. You know, you know. <laughs> Good hey, God. Get off my girl, you know? You, you are taking it way too far, dude. <laughs> Bro, God, like, insane, I, while I, I agree with you, I think she's toxic and not – her character arc is not great. It shows that she has no – she has not grown as a person throughout this experience. In fact, she's gotten progressively worse. Uh, I mean, yes, you could say, well, she, she went to go find May. That shows, like – progression i was just like but like we learned that she doesn't think she's worth redeeming because she did something awful to her girlfriend who then died apparently in g day mm -hmm. uh and she cheated on her she's no different than her father only for her to like in front of her brother she knows there's a bit of a romantic yeah. thing going. she does she does know that her brother has a romantic relationship with may only to in front of him be like I have a theme for your girl too. You know, it just was like a very weird story that like, I'm not sure one, the bigger thing, I'm not sure we need this type of drama. No. Like there, there's other things that we could be focusing on <laughs> like Monarch, like Apex and Shaw more importantly. And hell, Tim, Tim is an interesting character mm -hmm. or trying to find Hiroshi and figure out what he's doing that we don't need this added love triangle. It's interesting with the legacy cast, but doing it again in a weirder, worst way is like not intriguing to me. It's just kind of like, where are we going with this? What are you trying to say? Which <laughs> makes me start to think like you have a bit of agenda with this, you know, storyline. Um, so that's all, all I'm going to say. All I know is I'm punching you in the back of the head if you made a move on my girl, and I expect you to punch, punch I, me. Well, in the back I'd marry. It'd head. be like you making yeah. a move on Sarah <laughs> yeah. in front of me, and I and I would expect and you and to punch would, you me in the back. <laughs> See exactly, <laughs> exactly. How's that too far then? How's that? Too, I feel so bad for Gintaro here. Well, because oh. you're my brother, and I would beat you. you know? See, but, but they're brother sister too, bro. They're brother sister too as well. True, but it's brother brother, you know, not brother sister. It'd be wrong to hit your sister, you know. Um, <laughs> I agree, I agree. So, <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely punch you in the back of the head. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Um, but so yeah, so that's where this episode goes. I've seen a lot of people have some mixed reviews about it, but Corey, what what would you what would you score this? Oh, you man. We we did it to ourselves again, Trey. We did it to ourselves again. Like there are some really good key elements in this, and then right at the end, we talked about some kind of bad stuff. So like, I think I'm going to have to give it. I think I'm gonna have to give it. Oh gosh, 
I'm going to have to get, I, I, I'm in the sixes. Um, I think I'm going to have to give this one a six, three. And the reason it is where it is, uh, is because Shaw was phenomenal. And that was half the ship. So, uh, and then I liked Tim's elements uh, a little bit. But there are some ports of, oh man, 6-3 fair. 6-3 fair. Because I'm going to park fire me up. I know, I'm probably gonna, not a good thing to end on. <laughs> I know, right? That, that we we kind of messed up. I'm, I messed uh, it up. I should have ended on Shaw for you. <laughs> yes. I'm, I, I'm going to give it a little bit higher. I'm going to give it a 6-7. Uh, we're still in the six areas. We're going to give it a six, seven. I have I, I, this. This can go into the sevens. It can go into the eights. But I really need Kate to work out for me. I, I need Kate and Kentaro and the 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 legacy cast because I still like May. Her 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 whole like uh, kind of you know uh, just doing what's best for her makes sense. Like that that story arc makes sense to me. How to get home? How to uh, get with my family again? How to do this? Um, that 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 portion makes sense. But the Kate and Kentaro they are a little confusing with what 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 are they here for? What are they what are they pushing for? What is their mission in this show? And uh, Kate, you know, doing that to Kentaro right in front of me that 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 bugged me a lot, man. Um, so I, I think I have to give it, uh, yeah, the six six seven. Um, but I tell you what. Shaw and the Hostile Takeover is what I'm focusing on. I absolutely love that portion. Uh, everything that had Shaw in it, you know, it, 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 if it was just Shaw in here and really not, not, you know, and some of Tim and, you know, May finding the, out the backstory of May and Kate and Kentaro weren't in it at all this episode, it probably would have been in the eights for me. But like their, their storyline is frustrating me so, so much. And that I hate their 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 love triangle. It's it's bothering me. So um the other reason why I gave it a little bit lower too was we didn't get any kaiju this really this go around. We got Other the than the frost spark, the frost yeah. spark at the end. But you know, it was so quick with the frost spark, you know, like it, it was blowing up and back into the cave, which uh the, the tunnel, which makes sense. So um yeah, no, like it was still a good episode, but like I think I think what's happening now. Is because this is my lowest score of, of the se- kind of my, of my lowest score of the season. I think what's happening is, like you said earlier, Trey, we've seen them take a step forward and then three steps back, step mm-hmm. forward and then another three steps back. So we're progressively getting worse with the uh, legacy ca- uh, cast, uh, the, the tree post G day crew, yeah, post G day, or yeah, yeah, not the legacy cast, the post G day uh, cast. Um, Tim, I, I'm enjoying and every, everything like that, but there's just some weird things going on. This episode will probably be one of the ones once when we see the entire picture of it all uh, could very well, you know, improve upon for me. I'm going to give mm. it that opportunity to improve. But, uh, yeah, we, we we shouldn't have ended on uh, that. Uh, oh, I apologize. That that me. may have been uh, a bad – that was definitely a bad call on my part um, because I have a, a bit of a different take on it, honestly. Like – I think the highlights were certainly the Mecha Godzilla reference to Apex. I thought that was an awesome connection to Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, Shaw continues to be an insanely great part of this show. And Tim Absolutely. has grown more and more. Like in terms of a character arc, Tim is becoming a better character each episode for me the more we learn about tim the more i'm like i dig this dude i think he's just a great character um and and i love what i kind of love what's going on with shaw's mission you know um it's just the post gd crew that's a Corey's right they've gotten progressively worse and to be fully honest with you i would tell you i don't think this is the worst episode of the season i don't so that tells me as Corey and I have discussed, you know, every time we finish a season of a show, our finale show, we, Corey and I adjust our scores based off how we now see the entire arc of season of that season. I have a feeling there's going to be some episodes that really dropped because of this episode. Um, because like 
what we thought was going to be a progression, a character arc uh, in terms of the character growing as a person, they've only gotten worse as a person, <laughs> you know? So there were things like, Oh, that's interesting. Where are they going with that? We're starting to see where they did go with that. And I'm like, that's not where I wanted them to go. Um, so I'm not going to give it as low as a score as Corey, because like I said, there were some things I really loved. I Shaw, Mecha Godzilla, Apex references that kind of getting to the mission of Hollow Earth. Um, I'm going to give it for now. I'm going to give it a 7.9. And I know technically that makes it my lowest score of this show so far, but I think there's other episodes that would significantly drop at this moment because of this episode, you know, in terms of like, uh, what was it, Corey? Episode five, which was all post G-Day crew when they went to San Francisco, I think. Yeah. That episode is probably one of my worst ones now. Yeah. You know, that Um, that would be the worst one for me that because like, I I like to see the progression, not the regression of of characters We're we're seeing regression right now. Like it's, it's so frustrating. You know, the only thing that, uh, you know, saved this episode was Shaw and Apex. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Corey, what's the, what's the rest of the chat scene? Yeah, we're getting some uh, some uh, interesting scores for this one. We got a 6.8 from Red Hooded Outlaw, a 7.8 from Oracle's Clock Tower. Beyond the Night gave it a 7.5. Gianmarco Zampella gave it an 8.7 out of 10. 7.2 from The Butler. Um, 7.9 uh, saying Shaw saved it and Tim, absolutely. 7.5 out of 10 from Brogu. 7.8 out from Joker's Wild. 8.2 for Tim, uh, Terry Kelly. Um, I ended up changing that score a little bit. Uh, I'm a 7.9. Uh, 7.8 from, oh, 7.9 from Nine Lives in Hell here. 7.8 from King Donkey Kong. 7.5 from Cashew Crazy Craig Rowland. A 7.7 seven from Wayne Enterprises. A 7.5 from Bat Fanatic. Red Hooded, Red Robin gave it an 8. 7.4 for Hashtag Restore the Snatterverse Guy. 7.9 uh, from Dean Classified Monarch Eyes Only. 7.2 from Atomic Kaiju 1954. Mm. 7.3 from Trevor H. Uh, Gianmarco Zampella said 8.7 out of 10. I love this episode. I wasn't this up since episode one and two. That's oh, wow. awesome. Yeah. I- I'm glad to hear that, Gianmarco, that like this episode particularly really hooked you. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it- it's there's nothing wrong if people have disagreements on how much they love mm-hmm. this episode. I'm sure there's some people who are like, dude, this was awesome. I loved yeah. what they did. I love all the paranoia that they're building with all these characters. You don't know who to trust still. Is May on their side? Is she not? You know, is she going to disappoint Apex again? what is happening? You know, I I know a lot of people love kind of that spy mystery thing going on and that's, what's wonderful. You know, I I know it's, it looks like just about everyone is kind of in the same spot where Corey and I are with our scores, you know, somewhere in the high sixes to, you know, high sevens maybe. Uh, But it's, it's wonderful to see for you, Jay Marco, that like this episode really did something for you. That's cool. I think these, this episode and uh, the episode of San Francisco, I think they can change. Like, I'm hoping, I like, I, I still love the show. You know, I gave it a oh, kind absolutely. of a. I mean, seven is still yeah. a monster score, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I gave it like a six, seven, six, eight or something like that. I it's scored still, it as. I mean, it's yeah. still that anything that, above a five yes. is still worth watching. Yes, you know? absolutely. And that, that, that that's why I gave it the way it is. I think that's, I think. I think once when I know the entire path, this this episode will change for me. And I'm hoping, I appreciate you liking that. That's great, Super Pro progression versus regression. You know, like, I, like I, I I like to I like to see the progress, man. Like, let let me. I hope. Because I, I, I don't like saying I dislike Kate and I don't like saying that I dislike uh, Kentaro and different things like that. I want like the, there there were some really great episodes with them. Um, yeah, and I'm especially hoping... when they were dealing with tragedy, yes. right? Like, the, the yes. t- like to me, that was like the most interesting parts about this particular group was that they were all coming from a tragic background in a way, except for Kintaro, not really, other than he, he mm-hmm. just learned something horrible about his father. But like to see them kind of become a team and, you know, a family in a way. Mm-hmm. you really thought they respected each other, but to see something like what happened at the end of this episode with Kate and May, 
you know, it, it just doesn't quite show that they learned anything from their tragedy or being a team and putting trust in each other. If anything, they're, everyone is still playing an angle and it doesn't really make much right. sense of where they're going. Right. You, know? you are so right, man. And I think that would, that's what frustrates me even more. She knows the pain that her father having multiple relationships had caused her mother. She knows the pain that uh, has caused Kate herself as well as her lover in uh, at the school. Uh, the, the pain of having a multiple, uh, you know, being cheated on like that. And what does she do? She cheats uh, or she she's kind of implying that she's going to have a relationship right in front of Kentaro. Or her like, own and brother, which and own brother. you almost thought they were like starting to bond because yes. she even says like, can I have a moment to discuss this with my brother? It was like one of the first times she called him yes. her brother. So you're, you're thinking like, oh, they're like really starting to become a, a, yes. a family in a way, in a weird way. Yes. But like now she's like, hey, I, like, I don't care about your feelings. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be selfish and go after your girl here. And I, you, I get like, people are like, well, dude, that's possessive. Like, no, like, you know how weird that would be? Imagine, how would you feel if your sister, your half sister made a move on a girl you had not only a romantic relationship with, but a very intimate sexual relationship but, in front of you? It would be weird. Like, I don't think anyone would sit I, there and be like, this is okay. I think I think that's the I think that right there is is the part that we have an issue with uh, out of the entire thing the fact that Kentaro and Kate are siblings step siblings I think that's the only part that makes this love tri like like you know love triangles are always difficult to to to, to deal with and manage but the the fact that they're siblings is is what I think is is the part that drives me nuts like dude, she's Fredo bro. She she's freaking Fredo. You break my heart, Fredo. <laughs> <laughs> you break my heart, uh, Corey. What's the? Uh, did we? Yeah, we already said all the scores, right? For people, um, it's pretty much a seven. CJ so, gave it a uh, six nine. So I, I'm I'm yeah I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that uh, you yeah. know I I think the scores were great. Uh, let's go around. I think a lot of people scored it really well. You know, we were a lot in that sevens and uh, to eights and such like that. Yeah. Some high eights, and I I'd love to see that because that means people enjoy the show. I hope I hope I hope I hope like that uh, th there's some redemption to in the next episode for mm. you know the, some of the frustrations that I have like please don't go down this route Kate yeah. please for the sake of your brother yeah. and all the pain that you guys have all been through don't add another feed <laughs> well speaking of of the next episode Corey birthright uh what do you have any predictions i'll read what they say the summary is for this uh episode but they say episode eight the team goes back to where things all began to confront shaw on the brink of collapse monarch takes drastic measures interesting where, where, where do you think they're going with that Corey? um i uh I'm 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 a I'm a little I'm not, I'm just gonna say I'm a little concerned about this next episode, bro. A little yeah. concerned about the next episode. Uh, reason being is because I love Shaw and I love the legacy cast. And here we go, Kate uh, is flip sides on him again and uh, is uh, uh, out to get him after and she's working with. Monarch, Monarch has you know blackmailed them, blackmailed their team, kidnapped them, um, thrown them in jail, held them uh, captive, uh, and you know, you know, at the end of the last episode, she said to Shaw, you know, like I don't want anything to do with Monarch. I just want to work yes. with you. And then she was like, I'm leaving you, Shaw. To now, all of a sudden, I'm working with Monarch. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, like, her character just doesn't make sense. What, what Kate? <laughs> Please, no. She is confusing and toxic. Confusing and toxic. I, 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 I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I pray that the show redeems her. And I hope, pray that the show, you know, helps her see the light and goes the right path. Please. I need monsters. I need, I need some kaijus this next episode. And the yeah. we're going to get it from the uh, trailer. 
Um, I, I, I'm going to need, you know what? I, I'm going to need Shaw to step it up some, you know, like maybe, maybe he just needs to take care of Kate, you know, like, and, you know, one of those, one of those feeds, you know, like you can get in the way, you know, like you kind of Kate, you know, becomes <laughs> a better character at the end yeah. of the show, actually learns a damn thing or two. Kentaro uh, can act like I'm mad, you know, <laughs> please, Kate, um, please be better, do better, stop being toxic. Right. Oh gosh. Uh, I love what the, <laughs> what the, everyone's saying in the chat here. Um, I, let's see, where was the first one? Uh, the TJ saying, and the writers are ruining the idea of stepbrothers sister bonding. Cause it's a no, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, uh, how do you have a relationship after that? You know, like you don't, I, I, yeah, I don't think you do. Uh, You're they walk in a fine line for sure. Uh, they are going to where grandma died. Oh, with uh, Keiko. That's interesting, TJ. Maybe it does kind of look like it. It looks uh, does look like that similar scene, right? Um, maybe on the brink of collapse, Monarch takes drastic measures. Well, this must be the legacy the cast. If that's the case, the two trade we should we could see some legacy cast. We could see what happens when they fall into the pit and everything like that. And we could see why I bet you, you know, Shaw's going to be there to destroy that, um, that, uh, hollow earth, uh, portal. Right. Yeah. Um, but we'll have to see once again, all things considered, I know it's this episode, we're kind of giving it some hate. I think it's just showing our frustrations that this particular post G day crew isn't advancing as a character for us as they should be. We should be getting behind them and supporting them. And yet we're kind of going like, seriously, this again, like, wh what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> you know? And don't um, steal your family members. And, and yeah, don't steal your family members, like significant other or like person <laughs> or, or someone. It's just, it's just weird. It's like, I don't, I'm not going to say sloppy seconds, but like, why just why would you i don't know maybe we Corey and i don't think in that way and it's like cool to other people but to me it's a it's a weird situation well, i would not I, want to be in their shoes oh, right and, and i i think uh you know when you have a strong you know like family bond you know like i i just can't imagine it's like outside this world you know like i i just you're wild yeah yeah absolutely so, oh my I, gosh Wait, imagine if they find Grandma's body. Is she alive? We assume she's dead. What if she's alive? Oh, like kind of like uh, she's young still, like uh, like Shaw. I, I don't think they would do that just for the simple fact that it would be weird. Um, you know, it would just be weird that she just hung out there for <laughs> decades. You know, was she eating the bugs? I don't know. I, to me, I, I think she's. I think she's a goner. Uh, I think it's obviously it's best. Oh, oh, TJ. Anyways, um, this weekend. Sorry, not this weekend. Um, this uh, Thursday, we will be doing our episode eight watch party, birthright of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. I'll Please be setting be it up after. Uh, this stream today so you guys can set your notification bell so that way you can join us that night checking out the new monarch legacy of monsters uh and hopefully hopefully they, they write the train tracks of uh the uh, post g-day crew here i mean shaw's good legacy cast is great uh the kaijus that we've seen so far are great it looks like we might get a new one so maybe this will be an improvement of this last episode it probably won't be too tough to do that though um We'll see. We'll, we'll keep an eye out. But guys, just want to say thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, keep an eye out for an episode later today. I'm talking about some Rebel Moon theories. It's going to be good. It's going to be fire. Princess Itza is still alive. Can't wait to talk to you guys about this. If you haven't checked out Rebel Moon on Netflix, you need to. It's a phenomenal space opera that has so much potential of this universe that they're building over there that it's just cool to see something new and, and refreshing. You know, uh, I highly recommend it, just kind of like Monarch is. Even though it's Godzilla, it's a universe we do know because of Godzilla and King Kong. It's it's still expanding that monster verse universe, which we haven't really seen something like that before. So I'm very very excited to see where they go with it next with episode eight. Hopefully they improve. 
But I uh, just want to thank you guys so much once again. Replay crew, let us know your thoughts about episode seven. Did it was it mixed bag for you guys, or did you love it, or did you hate it? Let us know in comments your score. We'd love to hear from you guys. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like, share this video, subscribe, help us get to three thousand subs. We're so close, so freaking close. We can't do it without you guys. So make sure you share the stream too. Guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. I am your host, Trey, with the Super Bro Corey. And don't forget to tune in weekly. Same bad time. Same bad channel. See you later, guys. And now, a message. Now, uh, a special message from our sponsors. Just reminding you to be safe in a world full of titans. Be careful out there, guys. Or and be careful. special sister. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was just going to say, or be careful of your stepsister. Yeah, be careful of your stepsister. That, that's what yeah. I thought you You should have got a sponsor for that. You know? I had to go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure your stepsister doesn't steal your girl. <laughs> and now a special message brought to you by the Titan Preparedness Plan. With the recent spike in Titan sightings circulating on social media, proactive preparation for a Titan emergence event is crucial. A single towering force of nature has the potential to forever alter the lives of millions. It is our mission to help you prepare for that force. The Titan Preparedness Plan is your guide to staying safe in the face of monsters. These are the three steps you need to know. 1. Know before you go. Identify the location of your nearest Titan shelter and practice navigating a Titan evacuation route with your family on a weekly basis. 2. Run and take cover. In the case of a Titan emergence, calmly sprint to the nearest Titan shelter. If your designated shelter is inaccessible or at capacity, seek the basement or lowest floor of a nearby building. 3. Stay informed. Follow any further instruction from local authorities and stay informed using your mobile device, television, or radio. We can't stop a Titan emergence, but we can safeguard our lives. Join us in building a safer, more resilient community. We are here to protect you.